Banyana Banyana ensured that South Africa's flag will be flying proudly high at next year's FIFA Women's World Cup. The national team produced spirited displays at the Women's AFCON in Ghana, narrowly losing out to Nigeria in the final. Now, we continue to recognize their fire and achievement, which is raising the profile of women's, of the women's game in South Africa. And joining us live this morning is our national coach, Desiree Ellis, and captain Janine Van Veek. Ladies, good morning. Once again, congratulations thank and you, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Coach, I, like you've got such a long history mm. with this team. I mean, has it for you sunk um, that you are finally going to the World Cup? Well, when we walked out on arrivals at our tambo, that's when it really, you know, dawned on us the magnitude of what we did. But uh, immediately after qualifying, I had I I didn't sleep for a couple of days. I was just lying in my bed, you know absorbing the moment because it was really phenomenal. I can imagine. Janine, you've also been part of this team for so many years. Um, for you, has it sunk in yet that you're going to the World Cup finally? Um, still every day I think about it. Um, last night watching the Ballon d'Or when they showed a few clips of, of France, Women's World Cup next year, showing all the stadiums in the city that we will be participating in. Um, it was an amazing feeling knowing that we will be there. Um, so we're extremely excited to get there. Uh, we can't wait. We just want to fast forward and, and get there already. But um, yeah, it's just been a phenomenal feeling all around. Yeah, it's obviously a bit of a long road before we get to that World Cup. I mean, for you, coach, what is it that you think you're going to need to do to get the girls prepared, um, well prepared for the tournament? Well, we had good preparation this year, but I think we've got to triple our efforts. Um, you know, we've also got to play some top nations because it's important that we work uh, especially on our, our physical fitness and our team cohesion needs to be better. Mm -hmm. You speak about that team cohesion, but I, I couldn't help but you know, notice um, the way the passing game seems to be working for you guys. Is that something you've harped on and will be hoping will be you know, that key to success for you guys when you go to the tournament? Well, I think it's been worked on for the last four years. When Coach Vera was here, we just upped it a little bit. You know, That is our strength, putting the ball on the ground, because physically we cannot compete you know, with the Nigerians. Um, with the tall West African Cameroonians, etc. So we've got to put the ball on the ground, and and we stay stay true to who we were. You know, no matter what happened, we even forced Nigeria to play long ball. Mm. You know, when we played them, so it says uh, you know how good we were uh, on the day. But putting the ball down is definitely our strength, and we just need to improve on that more. You know, because at times we gave the ball away a lot, and we need to better that. You know, and minimise our errors, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah. Was it difficult? I mean, looking at the pitch on TV, it looked like really long grass, which yeah. does make, you know, playing that type of football <laughs> difficult. Was it tough for you guys to play on those pitches? Um, it was first, it was hard to adapt to. Um, we played our first friendly match before the tournament kicked off against Ghana. So we had a little feel of, of the field, um, slightly heavy, long grass. Um, but, I mean, that's what you expect in, in Africa, you know, going there and playing. But I think uh, in the past couple of years it's really the the pitch has really improved a lot um, and um, been maintained a lot so I think the field that we played on and most of our, our group stages which was in Cape Coast was much better field than the actual Accra Stadium but yeah yeah and, and tell us about the disappointment of not winning the tournament I mean it was there for the taking you pushed them to 120 minutes and having gone into this game knowing you won that first game it must have been heart-wrenching for you guys not to come back with the title yeah of course it was a disappointment for us we wanted to get that gold medal around our necks but I think the players and every single member of the team needed to keep their head held high and um, be proud of what we have achieved. Uh, we went there with a target to reach the, the World Cup um, and we accomplished that. And obviously we wanted to make history twice in one tournament um, by lifting the trophy. But, um, you know, losing on penalties is very heartbreaking. Um, and we still say today that we didn't lose a game in the tournament and exactly. Nigeria didn't score past us throughout 90 minutes um, and you know it could have gone either way for any team so we're proud of what we have accomplished. That is fantastic. Um, Coach, um, you mentioned preparations are obviously important. Um, you've been in football for so long. We're talking about a league that's coming next year. How key is that going to be to improve the standard of our football? I think the most important thing was first to qualify for the World Cup and now this league comes in, I think it will bridge the gap because uh, the gap from the SASA League, with all due respect, you know, it gives us an opportunity to play and to select players. The gap is very big. So, um, you know, it will close the gap really because it's very important for us.
Mm. Janine, you're playing in the U.S. We're seeing a number of our girls playing in Australia, mm -hmm. in America as well. I mean, that obviously benefits Banyana Banyana as well by you guys going out there to get that experience and would like to see more of our girls going overseas. Yeah, I believe now that we're going to the World Cup, I think more of our girls will get contracts abroad at top clubs. Um, but it, it has helped us a lot um, um, in terms of... of competition and playing at that level. I mean, looking at Tembi, player of the tournament, she's done exceptionally well. But that also shows because she's, she's trained and played at the highest of level throughout the year, coming in um, with that kind of pressure of all eyes on her. And she really stole the show by scoring phenomenal goals and really making a big name for herself. So it really pays off. Fantastic. Coach, the, the draw for the World Cup is happening this weekend. You must be anxious and uh, looking forward to who you're going to be pitted against at next year's tournament. Very excited. I'm leaving on Thursday. Um, you know, uh, we'll take whatever draw comes our way because uh, you, you hope for an easy draw, but no, no teams are easy. At the World Cup, you know, no, no, team, no teams are easy. <laughs> and then we'll plan and very really prepare because it's important that we go there well prepared. You know, we've been to back-to-back -back Olympics and really competed there. And uh, we don't want to sound arrogant in any way, but, you know, we want to go there and make our mark, you know. When we come back, people must not, uh, must not have ignored us. Mm. The issue of sponsorship and equal pay has come under the spotlight since you guys um, have done so well. Um, it's great that you're putting it on the spotlight, but is it really time now that we actually get, you know, the, the, the business sector supporting um, women's football in South Africa? You know, we said all along that uh, urging corporates to come on board to assist Cecil, and we still urge them to come on board. Um, it shows that the women's sport is growing, and we need the corporates to come and grow with us because uh, the former president of FIFA and the current president says um, the future of football is feminine. So, uh, you know, you've, you've got you've to gotta take come on board and grow, and, and that is important for us. And uh, we hope that the corporates come on board, especially now that we've qualified for the World Cup. I mean, under-17 has just come back from the World Cup, so it says there's a big future in South African women's football, and maybe they can ride the crest of wave with us and, and we can grow together. Yeah. Janine, for you, you've played over 150 times for the national team. Um, what is it going to mean to possibly lead out the team in the first ever World Cup match next year? Um, oh, my gosh. It's, it's going to be the most amazing feeling for me. Um, it's been a long life dream uh, for many of us in, in the squad. Um, and knowing that I'll lead my team into the world stage, um, playing against the world's best players, against the world's best team. It's going to be great. Um, I think we, we are ready for it. We will be sharp and ready once we have our great preparations that will lead up to the, the World Cup. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and your homework is going to be key. I mean, once you know who you'll be playing, I'm sure it will be important for you to go out there and assess, you know, the opposition you'll be playing against, Coach. Well, I work with a fantastic technical group, you know, assistant coach Tina Sonke, um, who keeps me sane on the bench. <laughs> and, of course, we have our analysts to make sure that we have um, as much footage as we have of the opposition and we can analyze. And that's what was key for us yes. um, at AFCON, where we analyze, um, you know, our position beforehand. Uh, strategize and came up with a plan and then at the end of the day especially the Nigerian game the first one um, you know we executed the plan really well because I watched the tactical footage I watched the game on TV later and in all aspects um, what we asked we were really good in our tasks so uh, we will be ready you will, we will have as much information and we will prepare well fantastic ladies once again congratulations we're extremely proud of your achievements and we look forward to the next couple of months as we prepare for that World Cup Thanks for having us. And that was our coach Desiree Ellis and Janine Van Veek joining us to once again continue the celebrations of their great tournament at AFCON 2018.